we go. Hey guys, this is Eliza from Dusk Angel Reads and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be doing some of my favourite historical fiction books. Oh. Is this what we... Okay, the first one I want to talk about, and these are in no particular order, but the first one I want to talk about is Finding Wonders by Janine Atkinson. I don't... Atkins? I don't know how to pronounce her first name. Janine, Janine, I don't know. But this is a collection of three short stories? Yes. It's a collection of three short stories about women throughout history that um, made some discovery in science. Yeah, so this follows Maria Sibilia Marina. Marine, Marina? I don't know how to pronounce these. Um, Mary Anning and Maria Mitchell. And yeah, they were just three women that made some scientific discovery throughout history that never actually was like known for it. Um, they were just kind of forgotten because they were women. And this just goes into what sh the author thought their lives would be like around the time that these discoveries were made and also afterwards. And I actually really enjoyed this. This is one that I got from the Y Chronicles. You won't be able to tell, but it's got the Y Chronicles um, stamp there. Um, but yeah, I actually really enjoyed it. I probably never would have picked this up if I hadn't um, gotten it through the Wire Chronicles because I've literally never seen this before anywhere else except for like people that have got the Wire Chronicles. Um, so yeah, this was a really awesome find. It was a really enjoyable book. It is written in verse or prose. I don't know. I'm not good with um, poetry type terms, but it is written like little short bits yeah but i really enjoyed it and it also has like a gorgeous i don't know i'm trying to get the uh, dust jacket off like look at that coloring look at that green so yeah i highly recommend it if you want a quick book with a couple short stories in it about women throughout history okay the next one is the only historical fiction fantasy that i've got on here and it is like barely fantasy there is only like one scene that goes into like slightly magical but it is a gentleman's guide to vice and virtue by Mackenzie Lee and this one does have um, talk of alchemy which is a real thing like people throughout history have been trying to create the philosopher's stone and other different things which is counted as alchemy but in this one it kind of goes a bit further where alchemy comes to life so that's the only reason it is a fantasy but and I've also got this map which is really cool because I got this one through Alcrate. That's why this is the exclusive cover. It's blue, not green, if you're wondering. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this one. It also has LGBT plus characters in it. Our main character is bisexual. I'm not sure what um, Percy sexuality is. I'm not sure it actually comes out and says whether he's gay or bisexual. I'm not sure. Um, and then Felicity, the sister, is I think asexual. So yeah, it has a fair bit of diversity in here and it's also got Percy is a person of colour and there's also another thing but that kind of spoils one part of the book. But yeah, but there is a lot of diversity and it's also just a really fun adventure packed book. It follows Monty and Percy and Felicity and Monty and Percy are going off on their grand tour. Um, it's a thing that they used to do in Europe where before you took over your family's estate or whatever you were going on to do, you would go for a grand tour around Europe. Yeah, so they go off on this journey and they're also taking Felicity with her to drop her off at her new school, which she isn't keen to go to because it's a school about being a girl, it's all etiquette and sewing and manners and that type of shit, and she's hell-bent on doing science. So she's not happy about it, but they all go off, and then one thing leads to another and they go off on this wild adventure, they nearly get killed a couple times, and it is just a really fun book. And also Monty is like freaking hilarious and sarcastic all the time. So yeah, and I love Felicity. And the next book, which is The Something Guide to Petticoats and Piracy. I can't think of what the word is. But yeah, the next one is Following Felicity and I am so keen. And it comes out, I think it's later this year or next year, I'm not sure. But I am really keen to get that one. The next one is one that's probably on every person's favorite historical fiction list. And that is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I don't think I need to explain what this one is about, um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. This is one of the first historical fictions I actually did read, and it is like a big book, and I really enjoyed it. I love that it's narrated by death. I think that makes it like a really unique experience. If it was narrated by Liesl, is that how you pronounce her name? Um, but if it was narrated by her, I don't know if I would like it as much because she is a little girl for most part of the book. So 
yeah, but also being narrated by death, we only see her in these three, I think it's three points, places, where um, she comes close to death and that's when death sees her and it's, it's like death explains what happens in these events. But yeah, it is a really enjoyable book. I highly recommend it. So that's my next one. Next, I actually have a graphic novel, and this is Mouse by Art Spiegelman. This is a true story retelling of Art Spiegelman's grandfather's experience during a World War II, and he was a Jew. So it's basically him and the girl that he falls in love with experience, and it is such an amazing book. And I also love the illustrations. Um, the Jews, like, well, each of the races or groups are um, different animals. So you can see the Jews are mouse, and then the Germans are a cat and there's also other ones I can't remember what other ones there are I think there's dogs um, yeah I'm not sure what the other ones are I don't remember but I like the art style it was really unique and it's actually told by art going to his grandfather's house and you get to see like him in now day at his grandfather's house trying to convince him to give this story up well not convince him but trying to encourage him because his grandfather kind of doesn't want to talk about it obviously as it was very hard hitting when it happened but yeah I really enjoyed this and I highly rec recommend it if you want a graphic novel and this is actually the bind up there is two parts um, but this is the complete collection so this is the bind up cover but yeah, it is really good, and if you want a World War II historical fiction that's in graphic novel form, then I highly recommend it. Um, it is very intense and heartbreaking at times, because this is real life. This is what legitimately happened to Art's father, uh, grandfather, and it can be very hard to read at times. There was a few times I had to put it down, but yeah, I'd definitely recommend it if you can handle the reality of it. Next I got a book that probably no one has ever heard of and that is because it is an Australian book and it is Where the Outback Drovers Run Ride by Bruce Simpson. Now Bruce Simpson is a real person and this is actually his life. Um, this one, me and mum ages ago when I first started getting into reading, me and mum decided we were going to do I think it was like 12 challenges of reading and one of them was reading an Australian book and this was the one that I picked up and it's basically just like little short stories of um, Bruce Simpson's life going through Australia. There was the war and when he came back and droving and there was a lot of other things. Um, but this was around the time that they were, the Europeans were verging into um, Northern Territory and discovering what is in Northern Territory. So was a lot, there's a lot of conflict between um, the Europeans and the Aboriginals in this. Um, there's a lot of events that I vaguely knew about being in a country, like being out in the country. So I was close to some of the events. They actually mentioned Condamine, which is a town that's like 45 minutes from here. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting. And there's also poems throughout it. I didn't read all of them because I'm not into poetry. And some of them like are really long. As you can see, that one's like two and a half pages. Um, so yeah, there was some poems because this is actually two books together. Yeah, Parkhouse Drover and Hell, High Water and Hard Cases in two books. And I think one of them's got the poetry and then one's got the other bit or something. But it goes through a lot of information about Australian history during the time of Bruce Simpson's life. And it also just talks about things like um, droving and working with cattle and stuff. So it was really interesting. Is that something I am interested in? So... Yeah, it was really interesting, and if you want something that's Australian history, that's real life, then this is definitely where you should go to. Um, it is really interesting. It did take me a long time to read, as it is non-fiction, but I enjoyed myself the entire time. And I do highly recommend to someone that wants to know a bit more about the history of Australia when it comes to Outback Australia, not just like the Europeans settling everything. It's just Outback Australia. And yeah, there was a little bit in there about the war when he gets called away, but then it's just mainly about Australia. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. And like I said, it's not one that I don't think anyone knows about because I've never seen this mentioned. And it is like an Australian author that no one knows about and I don't even know who the publishing house is. It's Cornstark Publishing, which I've never even heard of. So yeah, but I do highly recommend this one. Okay, the next one I want to talk about is The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather... somebody. <laughs> I can't think of the last name right now. Um, I do own a copy, but I don't have it at the moment as my mum is currently reading it. But um, 
This one is another book that is extremely hard hitting. It is World War II. Um, if you didn't know what it's about, it's based in World War II, and I'm pretty sure it follows, I think he's a Jew, um, the, this main guy who is sent to a concentration camp right next door to Auschwitz. And um, what happens is he becomes a tattooer, and basically they are the ones that tattoo the like code numbers on the everyone that comes into the camps. And he also does it for Auschwitz, which is next door. And Auschwitz was mainly, um, like, it was one of the biggest camps. And it had a lot of females compared to the one that he was in, which didn't have as many females in it. Um, but, yeah, it basically follows him and how he experienced the war. And then how he eventually met this girl. And, it, yeah, it is very hard hitting. There was a couple times where I literally had to put the book down because I just couldn't read anymore. Um... But I also read it extremely quickly. Um, if you didn't know, Auschwitz is one of the main camps that the concentration camps in the war. And a lot of, basically nearly every person at Auschwitz was killed. And this was around the time where they were just inventing the mass killings with gas. And so it's right when they were starting to discover that this gas could kill people. And then they started building these mass rooms where they could put everyone in and kill them all at once. Um, and yeah, it was extremely difficult to read because it is reality, it is what actually happened. Um, but I'm someone who is really interested in learning about World War II because a lot of my family fought in World War II and yeah, I'd, I like to read about it. I'm also part German and I'm also part Russian and part um, Irish and Scottish, Scottish. So I come from a lot of the places that this shit was happening in. So yeah. That's why I love reading World War II historical fiction, but sometimes they are very hard to read, and that was definitely one of them, but I do highly recommend it to anyone that wants to read a World War II historical fiction. The next one I want to talk about is Salt of the Sea by Rudis Pettis, and this is another World War II historical fiction. Are you seeing a theme here? Um, this one is about, it follows four characters, and they are all, pretty sure they're all different nationalities during the war. There's a German, there's a someone from Polish, Pol Poland, that wasn't a good sentence. Um, I don't remember where the other two were from, but it's basically these people trying to escape, well, three of them trying to escape um, onto the boats to get to America. Well, I think it was America. Yeah, they were trying to escape to America, I'm pretty sure. Um, and this is one of, well, it is the biggest maritime catastrophe ever happened. Um, it has actually killed more people than the Titanic, but a lot of people don't know it ever happened because it was during the war and there was really no way to count exactly how many people were present on the boat and what happened. It was during the war. They weren't paying attention to just a few more people that died. So it is very intense and it is again based on true events. Um, yeah, it follows these three people. Four, well, three of them are trying to escape from somewhere. They all meet up eventually and then try and get on these boats. And the other one is a German who is a fucking asshole. Um, he basically is sending letters home to his girlfriend saying that, oh, he's the commander, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's important. And he's really not. He's like slugging decks and shit. And um, he helps them stow away on this boat. And yeah, shit goes on from there. Um, this is another one that was very hard hitting and very emotional. I listened to this one on audiobook and I do highly recommend the audiobook. It has a cast narration, so it has like four narrators for the four main characters. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend the audiobook. It was really good and I was, I had to pause it a couple times because I was literally crying and I could not hear what was going on. So yeah, it is a very impactful World War II book. And it's about something that not a lot of people know about. So that's why I was really interested. And there is, um, they have like an information section at the back about the literal facts of um, this book. And they did also read that out in the audiobook, which I enjoyed. So yeah, this is definitely one that I recommend. And I really need to get to, what's the other one? Between something, between shades of, no, between shades of grey? Between something of grey. Now I've just got shades of grey in my head. But yeah, I really need to listen to that one. Well, read that one, whatever. Um, yeah, so this is just the last book that I wanted to talk about, and it is Trader's Gate by Michael Ridpath. This is another one that no one has probably heard of. Um, it's another one that me and mum were going to read for that challenge thing we made up for herself. 
when we were going to read um, the Australian novel. And this one is an adult historical fiction and it is set in Germany before Hitler actually like announced war. Um, and it is an assassination attempt on Hitler. And just let me read this. And it says, Dearest Father, by the time you receive this letter, he will be dead. The newspapers will say that his assassin was an unnamed, unknown German officer. It wasn't. It was me. Um, so yeah, and it's an assassination attempt on Hitler's life. And this is based on apparent... I think it was... I remember reading somewhere that this is based on a um, true event. But I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, that's basically the main synopsis of the book. It's just about this guy's life um, just before this happens and before he jo joins this group of people who were talking about an assassination attempt and then they kind of back down and he's like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. Um, obviously it didn't work as Hitler went on to declare war and we there is World War II. Um, but yeah, I did really enjoy this book when I read it. I actually want to reread it because, like I said, it is a bit fuzzy on the details. My cat is underneath my bed, clawing the bottom of it. Which is what she was doing last night while I was trying to sleep because I left my door open by accident. But yeah, um, yeah, so I highly recommend this one if you want an historical fiction World War II that's based before World War II. So that was very interesting seeing um, what was going on before World War II because all the stories I've read have been during or after World War II, not before it. So yeah, this one was really interesting and I do highly recommend it. Um, this does have a sequel. I can't remember what it's called. Something of War. Um, but yeah, I haven't read it. Um, I didn't even know it had a sequel until about a year after I read it. And then I saw on Goodreads that it had a sequel. And yeah, I just haven't got around to reading it, but I do want to, but I just need to buy the physical book. So that's all my historical fiction recommendations. I will be doing a series on my channel with um, favourites for favourite fantasy, favourite sci-fi, that type of thing. So... Yeah, I'll get to that one soon and you'll probably see them within the next couple weeks. So yeah, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and I'll see you next time.